Hello, and welcome to this lecture on maps and representation. The learning objectives for this lecture are to understand what maps are, identify common map types, understand what map normalization is, and discern map types and common online mapping tools. I first want to talk about representations. Representations can come in many forms. For example, as shown on the left, using mathematics to portray numerical and other types of phenomenon. In the middle section of this slide, you see examples of representing language, which in turn represents thoughts and ideas. For example, the middle top image shows an Egyptian hieroglyphics that they use pictographic methods for displaying language. Below is a picture of sign language, which is a form of language representation designed for deaf and hard of hearing people. The image on the top right shows musical notation designed to represent sound. Finally, the image on the bottom right might be considered as a form of the representation of ideas. In this example, the eagle of Poland is shown as a representation of national identity that can be used to create a common bond for people from a given place. Maps are one of the most common forms of representation. One idea about maps is that they are the spatial representation of the environment presented graphically. Keep in mind that many cultures throughout the world and throughout history have created many types of geographic maps and representations. For example, the image on the left shows a graphic design on ancient Egyptian pottery. Images such as these are interesting for reflecting how various cultures saw the world around them and how they represented their world. The image on the right is another form of geographic map that may seem completely different than anything you are familiar with. This is a map of Polynesian culture designed for navigating between various islands in the Pacific Ocean. The various lines and their directions represent wind and ocean currents for use in navigation. In the next slides, I discuss two common categories of geographic maps, reference maps and thematic maps. A reference map shows numerous features and does not convey a particular message or communicate specific information. Another way to think of a reference map is that it provides the background context to ground other features or specific areas of interest on the map. Shown here is an excerpt from the West Henrietta U.S. Geological Survey 1 to 24,000 scale quadrangle map. As a reference map example, note how the map displays several features such as roads, water, contour lines, buildings, and place names. A map like this would be useful providing geographical context to some spatially oriented activity. As a hypothetical example, if a new water line was going to be added to this area, the USGS map could serve as the base map for showing where the water line would go. Thematic maps convey a specific message or distributions of one or more attributes or relationships among several attributes. They are powerful devices for developing insights into geographical patterns and trends. Here we see a thematic map example, winner by state results of the 2012 United States presidential election. In this map, several regional patterns are evident. For example, note the cluster of red states in the southeastern part of the United States that voted for candidate Mitch Romney. Also note the clusters of blue states in the northeast United States that voted for candidate Barack Obama. Patterns like these can potentially reveal characteristics of the people who live in these regions, such as religious or social values. A choropleth map is a type of thematic map. A choropleth map usually aggregates data for display in a pre-existing region, such as a state or country. Typically, data are displayed in two ways. The first is with a qualitative distinction between entities such as color hues to show different land use types. The second is quantitative or numerical, where magnitudes of data are shown using different levels of color lightness or saturation. For example, the darker the color, the greater the magnitude being shown. 
This image is an example of a Coraplef thematic map showing world population raw counts by country in 2011. Note how lesser populated countries are in a lighter shade of blue and the magnitude of the data increases, the blue color lightness or saturation becomes darker. It is important when creating maps based on quantitative data to normalize maps so that the data being shown accurately reflects the underlying geographical situation. For example, showing data by U.S. Census Tract is a common way to present quantitative data related to population indicators such as age and gender. However, census tracts can vary in size or may have overall large numbers of people, such as in a city. Thus, comparing census tracts based on raw counts alone may not be meaningful and can be potentially misleading. The following figures graphically demonstrate the ideas of map normalization. In the top figure, raw counts of people age 55 to 64 are shown at the census tract level. In the bottom figure, the exact same data is shown using the exact same color scheme except this time the data are normalized by dividing the 55 to 64 raw counts by the total number of people living in each census tract. The map legend for this bottom map is showing the percentage of people aged 55 to 64 living in each census tract. The bottom map gives a more accurate picture of the number of people aged 55 to 64 who live in each census tract, as in many cases, they are a small percentage relative to the overall census tract population, which cannot be easily determined using raw counts alone, as shown in the top figure. Another type of thematic map are proportional symbol maps. Proportional symbol maps use symbols of varying sizes that are proportional to the value or magnitude being shown. This example shows the number of people age 18 living below the poverty level as of 2003 from counties in the Gulf Coast region of the United States eligible for federal disaster assistance after Hurricane Katrina in 2005. A proportional symbol map like this can be useful for comparison differences between counties for disaster role vulnerability reduction. Another type of thematic map is an isorhythmic map. Isorhythmic maps use line symbols to display the phenomena that are continuous in nature. For example, elevation is continuous. There is never a spot on the Earth's surface that does not have an elevation. Thus, contour maps, as shown in this figure, have been developed to display surface elevation. In a contour map, elevations of the same value are connected using a line symbol. In the map above, each line represents a 10 meter change in elevation and changes every 100 meters are indicated by elevation labels. The closer the lines are to one another, the greater the elevation increase. A similar approach could be used for other continuous surfaces such as temperature or precipitation. Another type of thematic map is a dot density map. A dot density map shows the distribution of an observation or observations at a specific point. The basic idea here is that each dot can represent one or more instances of the phenomena at the point, making this a useful technique for showing patterns based on point observations. This dot density map shows examples of worldwide tweets during Hurricane Sandy in 2012. In this example, each black dot represents the location of a Twitter user who revealed his or her location in their Twitter profile and tweeted about Hurricane Sandy between the 28th of October and 31st of October 2012. As one might expect, the United States appears almost black due to the density of tweets made in the United States. However, it is also interesting to note that Western Europe also appears almost black due to the density of tweets made even though the event happened in the United States. Also interesting to note are the tweet clusters that appear in other spots around the world, such as Africa and South America. In the following demonstrations, I want to show you examples of the map types that were just discussed and found in common online mapping tools. These examples are given for you to begin thinking about how you can apply what 
I would call the vocabulary of map types, such as reference and thematic maps, to various mapping tools you may already be familiar with. This first example I want to show you is perhaps the most commonly known reference map, Google Maps. Almost all of us are familiar with Google Maps. As you can see, Google Maps shows general information such as roads, land types, land uses, water, and so forth. One of the key aspects of Google Maps is its ability to change, scale, and display of reference information very quickly. Another interesting feature of Google Maps is that it provides reference information in different forms. For example, here we see Google Maps in the standard cartographic representation. However, you can quickly switch to reference information using a built-in Google Earth view that combines the standard cartographic information such as roads with visible satellite imagery. The next example I want to show you is a online thematic map provided by the US Census Bureau. In this example, you can see that the Google base map is being used to show thematic information related to population in the United States. Note how each US state is colored to represent its population from a lighter color to a darker color. As I move my mouse over the various state shapes, I get information about the total population, such as California and New York, which are highly populated states and shown in a darker red color, as opposed to Montana and Wyoming, which are less populated and shown with a lighter color. Finally, I want to show you some examples of some more cutting edge thematic type examples. Here we see a heat map which shows quantities of information at a particular location. In this example, we are looking at San Francisco and heat maps of travel patterns along roads in San Francisco. These kind of maps are very interesting if you're interested in building your own web mapping applications. For those of you interested in building your own web mapping applications, I encourage you to explore tools such as Google Charts. For example, in the chart gallery you'll see the geo chart. The geo chart allows you to build your own thematic maps using your own data right inside of a web environment. The tool is very effective at showing thematic information using graduated color schemes and has built in mouse over functionality for you to explore the data. Thematic map can be easily created using simple JavaScript functions. In this lecture, you learned about maps and representation. You first learned about what maps are and some ideas about representation in general. Maps are graphical representations of the world around us. Keep in mind too that many forms of representation exist. You were then shown examples of two map types, reference maps which are designed to show general information, and thematic maps, which are designed to communicate one or more qualitative or quantitative variables of interest. In terms of quantitative map representation, you are also shown examples of what map normalization is. Please keep the ideas of map normalization in mind whenever you see maps in the context of mainstream news media or other sources where maps are used to communicate about a particular situation. In particular, see if the person who created the map is using the eyes of map normalization and if the map is potentially misleading. I then showed you examples of common map types that can be found in various online mapping tools. If you are interested in building web mapping applications, I encourage you to look around the web for examples of other mapping tools than the ones I showed you so you can build your own reference and thematic maps. The following are references used in the preparation of this lecture. If you enjoyed this short lecture or have any comments or questions, 
feel free to contact me at the email address below. Thank you for watching.